Hi guys, Jason Lanier here, and I'm gonna show you the simplest way possible to understand the difference between crop sensor, full frame, and medium format cameras. People make it really difficult, and I'm gonna try my best to make it easy for you by showing you the comparisons of the sensors, showing you pictures for depth of field, and just explaining it in a really easy to understand way. I hope it helps. For this comparison, I use the Fuji GFX 50R, the Sony a7C, the Sony a6500, and I shot it in the beautiful landscape of Alaska. It's all about size and the physics related to how a sensor can handle depth of field, tones, and low light performance. Traditionally, the larger it is, the better it will perform. I used a sugar packet to give it some scale. The crop sensor is 366 millimeters of surface area. The full frame is 847, so it's over twice the size. And the Fuji GFX 50R is 1452, which is over four times the size of a crop sensor and nearly double a full frame. For the comparison, I saw all of these at a full frame equivalent of 50 millimeters. Crop sensor lens was shot at 33 millimeters. Full frame lens was shot at 50 millimeters. And the medium format lens was shot at 63 millimeters, which are all an equivalent of 50 millimeters on a full frame camera. I am in uh, Eagle River, Alaska, and it is April and it is, what was it today, five degrees? It's really, really freaking cold. The larger a sensor, the more space it has to render colors. All of the images were shot at f2.8. Wow, that's gorgeous. I need to take a picture of that. All of these images were shot in RAW with no post-processing done to them. This is the a6500, the a7C, and the 50R. All three cameras were shot in auto white balance and the Fuji being the largest sensor really gives us more colors when you compare them side by side. Please note that lenses will also affect color rendition, but generally speaking, a larger sensor should give you better color performance. I really am getting into this shoot for you guys. So I'm here and I'm gonna take a picture with each camera on the tripod of the tree, the fence, and the following tree. So it really has a lot of depth to the image. All right, so there's the A7C. There's the A6500. The GFX 50R is in the car that I just shot. We're gonna compare them now for you guys. This is the A6500. Let's look at the difference between the tree, the fence, and the trees in the background. Look at that separation. Then compare that to the full frame. You're gonna see much more separation in the full frame and then when you compare that to the medium format and you look at it up close, you're going to see it's even smoother with the medium format and has more of a film look. Depth of field is one of the main advantages of larger sensor cameras. You can tell going left to right how it gets smoother, the transitions are better, and this is all at the same aperture. So if you're looking for this kind of a look, the larger sensor cameras are going to be the way to go. There's a big bang for your buck when you go from a crop to a full frame sensor camera and that's shown here. You don't necessarily have to go medium format to see the difference. Going from crop to full frame makes a significant difference in the depth of field performance of a camera. Let's take a look at nighttime performance in the streets of Fairbanks, Alaska. This is the A6500, a nice solid image. This is the A7C. We get a little bit more depth and a little bit more color. And the medium format gives us a lot more depth and a lot more of a film look to it. When it comes to bokeh, larger sensors will give you larger bokeh. Look at the difference here between the crop sensor to the full frame. Same distance, same lighting, same scenario, but a much different result. And when you go to the medium format, it gets even a little bit larger. So if you're into bokeh, you want a larger sensor. Oh, <laughs> oh my lips are freezing. So now that you guys are experts, can you tell the difference between crop, full frame, and medium format cameras? 
Let's go out to an abandoned homestead here in Alaska and test your smarts. What is option A? What is option B? And what is option C? You guys ready for the answers? Let's do it. Option A is full frame, characterized by good overall performance, good depth of field, and good color. Option B is the medium format, and I think it's pretty easy to see. Richer colors, better depth of field, better separation, just a beautiful image. And option C is the crop sensor, still a very nice image, but less depth of field, less separation between the mountains and the gas tank, but still nice color. One more note, in the world of medium format cameras, the Fuji GFX 50R is actually kind of a small guy. When you compare it to a true medium format, like a Hasselblad H6D, it goes from a surface area of 1452 to a surface area of 2120. That's a big freaking sensor, but it's also 33,000 bucks. And don't be confused by the high resolution cameras when people say, oh, it's like a medium format. It's not. That's just a lot of resolution jammed onto a sensor. So does sensor size matter? Yeah, you can't deny it. The physics of it and the proof is in the pudding. You can see the difference in bokeh, depth of field, color, so on and so forth. But what matters the most is that you're out there shooting. So if you can only afford a crop sensor or full frame camera, have at it. And eventually if you do photography long enough, my friends, you will graduate into bigger and bigger sensors because your curiosity factor will lead you there and you'll want to do more. And that's all that matters is that you're out there shooting and creating and eventually you'll find the gear that works for you. So until next time, keep shooting, never give up on your dreams. Find our gear that works for you, my friends. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. Farewell from Alaska. Bye. I'm just really pissed off I can't find Dexter Morgan. That's who I came up here to find. This isn't creepy at all. Don't know if anybody's even in that car. There's blood all over the street. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. But I don't know. Those are my tire tracks that just ran over it. I don't, there's no body though. So this is really weird. It's like something went off over here. I'm just kind of crazy enough to check it out. I wanted to see if I could follow that trail, but I was sinking in. There's no way I would have gotten very far down in there. I have no idea what it was, but it's very curious. And there is nobody in that car.